Welcome everyone, we're going to be doing another video and in this one we're going to turn Betelgeuse into a black hole and put a whole bunch of stars and planets around it and see what we come up with. So we begin with an empty simulation, then we go to add objects, then stars, then Betelgeuse. And from there we're just going to keep adding mass to Betelgeuse until it becomes a black hole. Your mass should already be set to sun or solar, so I'm just going to be clicking the little plus 10 until a black hole appears. And there it is. We just turned Betelgeuse into a black hole. So now it doesn't really matter what star you start out with, but I'm going to start out with Sirius. And since Betelgeuse is a huge black hole, we don't have to worry about just star escaping. So now I'm going to put my first star around Betelgeuse. Um, I'm going to use Sirius and then we're going to go from there, adding stars as we go. To make it easy, I'll just use Sirius for the first three stars before we go and we pick another one. Okay, so now we're going to go in and increase the inclination for the first three stars. The inner one will put 10, then 20, then 30. Alright, so now that we've got that done, We'll go in and change the view around so we can take a look at what it looks like right now. Alright, so now we'll go in and we pick the sun and we'll put the sun on the inner side of the other three stars. And we're going to put an inclination of 5 and then we're going to see what happens. So now we're going to go in and get our next star and I'll pick a red dwarf. And here we might have to start adjusting the orbits so that they're not too far out from each other. So I'm going to drop this red dwarf on the inside the orbit of the sun. And then we're going to go to inclination and change the inclination to about the number two. Inclination, for those who don't know, is imagine you have a flat plane and all of the stars are, and planets are orbiting on this flat plane around their central object, black hole or massive star or whatnot. Well, the inclination is how high or below that plane that the orbit is. So 10 would be just above the orbit, 20 would be even a steeper angle, 30 would be a steeper angle, like that. So we kept adding stars and I added Betelgeuse in there. So we will keep increasing the angle, uh, the inclination, and we're going to be 40 and 50 and 60 and so forth. And Okay, so now with these outer stars, we're going to have to start paying attention to the orbits, how far out from each other the orbits are. We want to keep them within about 100 years of each other so that we can get the effect that we're looking for. If they're too far out, then we won't get the right effect visually. So one good thing to do while you're adding stars and changing the inclination and adjusting the orbits is to change around the view because when you do that what happens is as you place the star you will be placing it in a different position and so you can have strange looking inclinations with stars crossing each other and stuff like that so that'll give a nice effect too. One thing you'll notice is as you change in the positions and you continue adding stars, you will find that some of the stars already have a small inclination as opposed to when you start the uh, in your simulation, all the stars uh, have an inclination of zero. Well, as you're changing around the position, you will be giving them inclination, you know, as you move the rounded positioning so that's one thing to keep in mind but we want to keep adding inclination at a steeper angle so that's what we're going to keep doing in this vid we are not going to mess with eccentricity because adding eccentricity will add a whole new set of problems that we don't want to have to deal with right now 
um, eccentricity is how circular your orbit is. So the more eccentricity you put into an orbit, the more lopsided it will be. You'll have one side that's closer to the object that you're orbiting and the other side that's far out. And when you do that, there's a greater chance that one of your planets or stars could affect gravitationally your what you're doing and kick your star either close in or kick it out of the system. So eccentricity is not going to be used in this as you can see, I've started added planets into it. Um, I'm putting the planets inside the orbit of Betelgeuse and I'm gonna try to fill that gap between the star Betelgeuse and the next star in. And I'll also try to put some planets in close to the black hole Betelgeuse as close as I can to see what happens. Uh, moving around the simulation so that the orbits are all in different positions. On this one here, we're probably going to have to go in and change the orbit downwards so that the orbit of the planets is inside the orbit of the star Betelgeuse. And um, this planet, I think we will make it a hundred year orbit from the black hole. You got to remember, this is a supermassive black hole. So then we can go and move everything around and see it from all different angles and maybe we can add a few more on the inside okay now let's move in closer to the black hole we're going to try and drop a planet right up inside very close to the black hole don't know how close we're going to be able to get before the black hole snatches it up if it does we'll just move out and put one outside that first star Okay, I think we can add a couple more planets. Um, we'll put, after this planet, we're going to try to put a smaller planet closer to the black hole, probably just outside the first star, but inside the orbit of that first planet that we placed. Um, that should work. We'll probably pick Mars. All right, so let's go and see just how far out that first planet is then uh, we can um, pick mars and drop it just inside the orbit of that planet which will put it just outside the orbit of that first star that first planet is in a seven year orbit 7.7 .7, i think it said so Mars should be in about a four-year orbit or maybe five. Okay, so now I think we're finished. Um, we have 11 stars and five planets. And I think that one planet that I tried to put close to the black hole uh, inadvertently dropped it inside the black hole. So you got to be careful when you're doing that. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Let's get in close and take a look and see what the inner system looks like. And yeah, I think we can add one more planet. We have to be careful not to make it drop into the black hole. So here we go. So that's good. We got Proxima B. That's the planet we just placed there. Closest planet to the black hole. Mm, maybe we can get one more in between Proxima B and the black hole. Let's see if we can get that done. Um, all right, let's see. Well, I guess we we'll leave it the way it is and we'll run the simulation for about 100,000 years and see what happens. I think we built a nice stable system here, so I don't think we're gonna lose anything. I think everything's gonna stay together. Well, it seems that I was wrong. After running the simulation for about 100,000 years, something got kicked out. This, a planet, Proxima b, which was the closest planet to the black hole. As we pull in closer, take a look, we can see that the outer system seemed to have stayed pretty much intact, but the inner system looks like it has been shifted just a little. And it looks as if it was the planets that were most affected. 
not the stars themselves the stars themselves seem to have stayed pretty much where they were but the planets seem to have moved a little including planet nine and if we go in close it looks as if jupiter was also affected down there it seems that mars is pretty much where it was before it didn't get affected so just jupiter and planet nine and if we pull out um everything else looks like it stayed pretty much the same um, proxima b is gone um, and that's about it well let's see what it looks like without the orbital lines included and um well looks pretty cool well that's it for now i want to thank you for watching and listening and give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and i will see you in the next video